Thank you for tuning in to this segment of the Watchbox Review. And today, in today's Watchbox, I'll be reviewing my Croton Stainless Automatic. And that's the watch you see right there in the middle of your screen. So, let's take the watch out of the box and take a close look. So here is my Croton Stainless Automatic. Um, I'm calling it Stainless Automatic simply because I don't know what else to call it. There's no model number or name or anything like that anywhere on the box or the packaging or on the watch itself. So if anybody out there in cyberspace and on YouTube can identify this watch, then please, please um, feel free to, inst uh, to private message me or simply reply back to this video, post a comment on this video, because I would like to get this watch in like a black dial, black faced uh, version of this watch. So. so let's take a look closer. Um, it's all stainless as you can see. Uh, most of it's brushed. The sides of the case are nice polished on both sides. So some dimensions on the watch. The bezel diameter is 43 millimeters and tip of lug to tip of lug end to end is 51 millimeters. So that combined, combined with the raised case for the automatic movement and the added weight of an automatic movement um, do give the watch a pretty hefty, heavy, uh, massive kind of feel to it. So it's, it's definitely heavier than my Invicta and the Winger that I reviewed in my other videos, which are both quartz. So both quartz similarly sized and similar, similarly priced as well. <clears throat> um, it's a 100 meter resistant case and the crown itself is not a pull, uh, not a screw down crown so it simply pulls out to make adjustments to the timepiece. Um, let's take a look at the bracelet here. The bracelet tapers aggressively from 22 millimeters uh, lug to lug to 18 millimeters at the brace at the buckle. <coughs> so as you can see it's the center links are polished and the side links are brushed stainless on obviously on both sides so you can kind of see some of my scratches and things like that already I'm pretty rough with a lot of my watches I don't baby them at all um, when I wear them throughout the day so I've had this watch for three days you can see some of the scratches already uh, on the bracelet and on the buckle so here's the buckle clasp it's got a nice little laser etched Croton logo and it's pretty small. The the over the little shroud cover here is pretty short and pretty small. Um, it's got a little lock feature here, and it locks pretty well. Really, really, really surprised at how well this clasp uh, locks into place. And it's very easily unlocked by unlocking the mechanism here. So uh, the part that touches your skin is bead blasted stainless. So that's really really cool. I really like the satin feel uh, of this uh, mechanism. Usually it's like you know just polished stainless or something like that, and it you know, doesn't doesn't feel quite as nice on the skin. So I really really like this. Feels dare I say almost like titanium, like a matte finished titanium. So it's kind of nice in that regard. So um, let's see the heart of the watch and the whole reason for buying this watch is the Miyota 8215 movement on the inside. Let's try and there you go. Move the rotor around so you can see the spring mechanism and some of the mechanics inside there. So this is the reason why you buy this watch. So this, by the way, is my first uh, mechanical watch of any sort, be it you know automatic wind or not. So I intentionally chose a Miyota 30, uh, 8215 simply because I wanted something cheap. Number one, if I kill it, it's not going to it's not going to hurt me financially. And then uh, number two, something accurate and reliable, which uh, this particular mo movement uh, is. Both of those things. You can do any kind of Google search or web search or, or various watch making or watch collecting forums. Uh, Miyota movements are pretty, pretty re known to be pretty reliable and fairly accurate uh, for the amount of money you spend on them. So, so that's the heart of the watch there. Um, obviously it's a screw down case back, exhibition type case back. So there's the wind rotor going around doing its, doing its thing. So those of you who are new, like me, who are new to owning a mechanical watch, um, when I first bought the watch, I gave the, the crown about 20 turns or so to give it a full wind. And I've basically, I haven't really, I haven't touched it since. I've basically been wearing the watch every day and every night. But I, I love wearing the watch. I mean, I, I like the feel of it. I like the look of it. 
Um, I like the heft of the watch. It's heavier, like I said, it's heavier than any any of my quartz watches, and that gives it a real feel of quality, you know. So it's kind of nice in that regard. So, um, what else? Oh, here you go. You can also see the folded end links. In fact, if I had one complaint about the watch, it'd be the end links, you know. But then again, for a hundred dollar watch, you know, you're, you're not. You're, you're, chances are you're not going to get um, anything but a folded, a pair of folded end links. So. On the good side of that, though, they did do a nice job fabricating the end links. They sit, you know, pretty snug, and they're not loose and rattling around at all. So, pretty good in that regard. So, I think the bracelet altogether is pretty serviceable. Uh, definitely very usable, you know. But, I guess, if you wanted to upgrade to a watch to do or something like that, or maybe a NATO olive drab, you know, type of strap would look, would look really good on this watch. So, you know, it, the watch is definitely worthy of that type of an upgrade as well. So... Uh, speaking of olive drab, the camera probably doesn't catch it, capture it, but there's a slight tint of olive drab uh, color to this dial. So it's not like a battleship, dark battleship gray like you see there. It's got a slight texture. There you go. There's the texture. And it's got a slight olive drab color to it. So there's the date window and the movement of the second hand. I would show you the loom, the nighttime loom, but quite frankly it sucks. So there's really no point in doing that. There is some lumin lum uh, illumination on the on the uh, hands of the watch, but you know it's pretty blah. Nothing, nothing really to get excited over. Nothing worth wasting your time over. So that's about all. That's all I'm going to say on that. So, so there you have. There's there you have it. There's the watch, and let me go get the box that it came in and show you guys that. Okay, so here's the box and the packaging material. So, you know, for me, boxes are really not that big of a deal, but I know a lot of you people buy these as gifts and things like that, so presentation is really important in that regard, so that's kind of why I spend a minute or two showing you some of these things. So, let me do it one-handed here, since I'm holding the camera. In fact, forget it, let me put the camera down. There you go. So here's the leatherette case that the box, that the watch came in. There you go. Pretty straightforward. Uh, it's got a little compartment up on the top for the instruction manual and warranty information. This little flap here kind of just folds down. And it's got a little mounting piece here. And oh, here you go. Here's the end, here's the stainless links. Close up of the stainless. Oh, one thing I forgot. This what I forgot to tell you. This watch has some neat little screws here to hold the removable links in place. Very cool. I wasn't I wasn't expecting this. I'm not sure if the Invicta 8926 has this or if it has friction uh, split pins. I'm not sure, but I definitely wasn't expecting a watch this cheap to come with uh, screw fixtures here to hold the bracelet links uh, together. So the links themselves are solid stainless. Really nice. And pretty good quality. Not quite as big or as heavy as an 8926. Um, link, but still, for again, for a watch this price, you know, hey, it's 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 very serviceable and actually pretty nice. So, so let's put everything back together and close up here. There you go, and we'll conclude um, with this little commentary. I b I bought the watch on eBay for thirty one dollars total. That included shipping and everything. So again, I had I have no idea what model number this is or what the name of the watch is, and I don't know, you know, is that a good deal or not? I think it's a good deal. I'm pretty sure it is, based on the prices I've seen for other uh, Asian origin watches that use Miyota uh, movements. So I think I'm, I got a pretty good deal on it. But um, you know, I'm overall pretty ha overall I'm pretty happy with it. And um, you know, it's definitely a gateway. I see this is definitely like a gateway drug to other mechanical automatic movements. So there you have it. Thanks for tuning in to this chapter of the Watchbox Review.